So welcome everybody to our Art Play Wildflower um, Inspiration. This is a session that coordinates with the Wildflower Collection. And as you will know, I'm going to kind of walk you through the collection a little bit. And as I sometimes have an issue scrolling through the images to see what's included here, I'm just going to nip over to my blog. There seems to be a better way to do it. But of course, you get six product products in the collection. We have an art play palette, which is like a kit. It includes multiple papers and transfers and elements that you can use to create your pages. And of course, uh, the brush set that coordinates with those elements. And then I put together these curled paper frames. These were a request for, from a couple of my team members. Not sure if they were exactly what they were looking for, but hopefully um, you guys enjoyed them anyway. And then of course, we've got the multimedia flowers, which uh, would be, um, which coordinate really well with the wildflower theme, uh, the word art and uh, the artsy layered template. And then when you purchase the whole collection, which obviously if you are here today live, then you have done so, you get this fun little bonus, which includes the, an, an additional paper and um, some of the word art and the layouts. Now, there's also a fun little typewriter transfer in the mix there as well. And then the following week after I uh, released the collection, I always kind of create companion sets. So I created the artsy cards, which coordinate really well with the photo inspired templates. They're really good if you are interested in doing project lifestyle uh, layouts. And then they're also good for crafting as well. And I often will use these and incorporate them into my photo artistry or digital scrapbooking designs. And then the artsy transfers, which we all know are the layered kind of versions of the transfers and overlays that are in the art play palette. There is always some differentiation between the two and I try to make them so that they coordinate with those elements that are in the art play palette so that you don't have too much overlap and don't feel like you've purchased the same product. So let's just hop back into the files here and take a look at some of these products. Um, the brushes, of course, I really love some of the paper textures in here. There are some great blending brushes in here too. I really like this one with the flower edge and there's some blending um, one here with the text in it. I always like these interesting brushes that have these transitional edges that work really well for using or mask, using with a layer mask so that you can blend your own photos. And I've just been putting the finishing touches to the written part of the Masterly Brushes class. So um, blending is kind of top of mind at the moment. There's some fun little edges, again, paper textures and script. There's some edges here. So I wanna try and use some of these brushes today, show you how some of those could be used. And then we've got the elements, of course, which are delivered in two different formats. We've got the PNG style ones to which you can apply your own drop shadows using either styles or your own custom um, approach in Photoshop or elements. And then you have the um, options that have the PSD and then the separate layers. And these just allow you to have that separate shadow layer. I've basically created a cast shadow so that you don't have to. And this gives you the flexibility of being able to change the opacity of that shadow or change the color um, or even, you know, just change uh, how, how well it's warped um, in terms of how you want it to look on your page. So just gives you more customization and flexibility in creating your digital designs. And then the papery, which is always my favorite. I am always a fan of the artsy papers, as you know, because they're pre-designed for you to blend your own photos. So you don't have to do any work there, but I do provide you with different options here. So we've got the solid papers, um, which are a bit late showing up, but we've got these solid papers on which you can go into your second uh, Art Play palette folder. And then these are the different options here that you can drag and drop onto those solid papers to create your own custom designs. And then the other option, which I was just telling you about, the artsy transfers, these are delivered in a PSD format. So this means that when you open them into your workspace, then instead of being presented with a single layer and a transparent background, you have that transparent background, but you have all of these different options here. And so this allows you to, to use any of these layers independently. 
It also allows you to modify those layers by changing the color. You can change the size so you can rotate any of these. You can kind of move them around the canvas. So you can really um, move the different pieces of the transfers. I, I often think of them as, as different pieces of a puzzle that you can move around, but you have more flexibility in that you can kind of create your own custom designs. Um, so those are pretty cool, um, a great way to be able to introduce those with the transfers and overlays from the art play palette um, onto the solid background. And then we have the other sets that go with this collection. So what do we have here? We have the artsy cards. So these are delivered in JPEG and PSD format. So same kind of scenario here where you have the layered version of the card or you can just use the JPEG option. And then we have the curled paper frames. So I'm going to show you how those work. If I go ahead and go into my workspace, and we'll just go ahead and grab one of those backgrounds, those papery backgrounds. So let's go with this one here. I'm going to drag it into my workspace and place it into the background here. And typically, you would want to actually create a new layout. And this really just makes sure that you preserve the integrity of the actual paper design and you don't end up changing it anyway and accidentally saving over it. So um, just to be safe, it's always a good idea to create a new canvas and move that paper over there. And then we're going to go into those cold paper frames and I'm going to go with the second option because that's going to coordinate really well with that paper. Drag that into the background. And it's really important that you drag it into the background because you want to retain all of the layers that are available to you in this file. And then you're going to go and select all of those layers by holding down the shift key on the keyboard. And then with the move tool selected and the auto select box unchecked, you're gonna move all of those layers onto your layout design. And you can see that those frames actually work quite perfectly on that background. And so you have a couple of different options here for being able to, to use these different frames. You can, of course, perhaps turn off one of these frames. So if you just want to use one frame, then you have the option to just have that frame in the mix. You can also change the color or the opacity of the shadow. So if I want to increase that, you can see I can increase the lever up here. It's the fill lever on the Photoshop in Photoshop, but if you're working in Elements, that's gonna show up as the opacity. You can also duplicate that layer to make it even more intense. You can also change the color of that by going to Edit Fill. And so currently it's at a gray sort of black color. I'm going to go and select my color option from the contents box. That's gonna open up the color picker. And then I'm going to select sort of a dark brown instead. I think that's gonna coordinate really well with my design. Click OK, ensure you have that preserved transparency box checked. Click OK, and you can see that that has changed the color slightly and it has reduced the opacity because it's a lighter color. So I can increase the size of that. You also have the option to change the blending mode. So good options here would be multiply, perhaps color burn. You may have to go in there and change the, the, the fill or the opacity option. Uh, the linear burn blending mode happens to be my, my personal favorite uh, for working with these frames. And then you have this mask layer. And so this is designed to be used with the clipping, clipping mask function. So I'm just gonna go and navigate to my photos. I didn't open these up earlier. So we'll just go over to those real quick. Fortunately, I know where they are and we've got quite a few photos for March because that month is now finished. So I'm gonna just go and grab a picture. This is a nice one, Ellis. I'm gonna drag it into my workspace. I'm gonna drag it directly onto my layout. And you see, because I had the mask layer selected, then it's going to drop my photo directly onto the mask layer. And then with the move tool selected, I'm gonna select the auto select option. This allows me to pick up that photo in my workspace. And then I can move this photo around and resize it by clicking on the corner icon. You get this double ended, diagonal arrow, which allows me to resize that image. And if I wanted to rotate it, I'm just going to pull that cursor out slightly, and you're going to get that arced double-ended arrow. And this is going to allow me to rotate that photo around to get it 
to fit over the edge. Now, it's really important that you actually have the photo directly over the edge of the frame so that it completely covers that mask area. And then you're gonna go to layer, create clipping mask. And so that's gonna clip the image to the frame. You can go to your curves or your levels and you can just edit that slightly. So I'm just gonna pull that curve up just to boost the lightness and the contrast in that image. The next uh, option here is the paper texture. So you can turn this off if you want to. You can also recolor it. So if I wanted to go in and maybe this time add a blue or perhaps I wanna go with more of this pink color, um, but have it a little darker, then I can go ahead and select that with the preserve transparency option, option checked. I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna turn that paper texture to that more pinkish tone color. And then I'm going to apply different blending modes. So the darkened ones are going to work better here. Uh, darken is not a great option. Uh, multiply is pretty good. I really like the color burn, um, but the uh, linear burn is always a winner for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. You can of course duplicate that texture if you want to, make it more intense. You could play around with the opacity and bring the, the intensity down a little bit. Then you have this fun frame area, um, which you can customize if you want to by clipping a paper to that if you wanted. Uh, these frames are really just intended to be used as is. And some of the frames that I provide, I offer the, um, the edges as separate layers. In this case, I didn't because I felt like that you already had so many layers to work with. And the whole point of these products are really for ease of use. And then of course you have the uh, ripped edge part of the frame. So there's a separate shadow for that particular part of the frame. So again, we can go in there and we can go ahead and select that dark brown. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as previous. I'm gonna change that and then um, keep it as linear burn, maybe play around with the intensity of that by changing the opacity or the fill. Um, and then you also have this curled edge, which I would personally leave as is. You have various options to color it using the clipping mask. And we'll go into that as we move into the next part of the session. And then, of course, you're going to do the same thing with this next frame here. So just a little bit of guidance on how to use those new curled frames. And then if we step back, I can show you that we have... The Word Art Mix, of course, which is super fun, allows you to take lots of different varieties of Word Art and place them together to create your own title clusters. These are also uh, delivered in, well, the ones that are available, the wooden ones, but all of the flat ones, the word transfers, uh, the word strips, and the Word Art, they're all delivered in ABR formats so that you can use those with the paintbrush tool if you want to. And then we have finally, are we finally, we have the multimedia elements. These of course are like the artsy transfers in that they are layered files in PSD format. So you can use the layered file, which includes all of these other files, which I have saved in PNG format for those of you that are not working in Photoshop or elements. And then finally, we have the artsy template, which I typically start with as we move into our session. So before we actually go forward and start creating our three layouts using this collection, oh, I almost forgot we have the bonus as well. So obviously if you purchase the five products um, before the end of the month, then you get these bonus elements. So we have this bonus element here, which is a multimedia element. So it brings your multimedia elements up to five. And then we have this bonus paper, which is always fun to have that. We'll try and use that today. Um, I added in this extra stamp, which I thought was pretty fun. I had a request from one of my team members to add a fountain pen. And for some reason, I <laughs> translated that into um, a typewriter. So I wanted to add that into the mix. Uh, it seemed a good way. There are some extra word art pieces here, which are always useful when you are scrapbooking. And then of course, you've got your live inspiration access 
uh, folder here. This will this PDF here will be switched out later today when the replay is available. Um, it will then provide a link to which you can actually go and have permanent access to watching this session online anytime you like. And I think it's really great to have that with the collection so that when you're working with the collection, you can just hop in and remind yourself of this inspiration if you need to. And then finally, we have these layout ideas. So I put together all of these different options so that you can um, come up with some easy layouts using all of the pieces of the collection. So that is the collection piece. We have a number of different lay uh, layouts from the team. I had a really hard time whittling them down this, uh, this, this month. Usually I try and keep it to 10, but I can, I can not share all of these. Um, there are a couple that I didn't share and that's just because there was some duplication, but I thought we'd go through and take a look at uh, some of the different options. These are from, this one is from Adrienne. Um, I love how she's used the stitching on the paper texture here um, and the beads, how she scattered the beads across. There are, these are actually included with the multimedia elements and they are a great enhancement to either the splatters or replacement for the splatters. So if you're a splatter kind of person and like to use those to embellish white space, then you can also use these beads that include um, that are included with the multimedia files. And because they're in there as separate layers, you can just kind of drag them in and use them independently. And then of course, the colors with this collection work really well with black and white photos because you can apply a blending mode to the black and white photo. And it's gonna allow those colors to show through the black and white image to um, create uh, the, the multicolored effect here that Adrienne has created. Um, I love the textures in this particular cat collection. And it was actually Adrienne's idea for the wildflower collection. She came up with the concept of wildflower. I'm not sure I um, fully <laughs> met the expectation, um, but quite often I don't have much control of how these things turn out. I typically start with an art play palette, which may morph slightly as I'm in the creative process um, and I have sort of an idea. And um, if I try to control the process too much, it, it doesn't work for me. So I really just have to kind of give it up and, and what, what happens is what happens. Um, so thanks, Adrienne, for your um, ideas. I thought this one was really neat. This one is from Charlene, and I'm going to actually show you how she did this in this class. But I love how she extended the photo over to the ripped portion of the frame. I think it adds um, a really different look. And in fact, I don't know if uh, this one is from Nancy, and she's done a very similar sort of thing here, but she's applied blending modes, and she's it looks like she's added the photo also over the frame as well as the, the torn edge. So just a couple of different options there, how you can um, uh, modify those frames even further. And of course, I'll be showing you how to do that um, as we progress through this session. And then we have this one from... Michelle, and this is great. Of course, she does wonderful clusters. Um, and if you're interested in how she does her clusters, then go ahead and watch the latest AA Connect session in the store at Anna Aspinus Designs. It's available right here. So if I go in here into the store area, you can see that the replay is available. And I walk you through this layout of hers, which is really fun. In fact, a couple of layouts, this one here, which is one of the layouts using Wild Bloom. And I talk you through her cluster making process and the intentional approach that she takes to building those clusters. And uh, let's go back to our... So I really like her clusters. I really thought this was quite nice. I, I like the embellishment, the hair piece. Um, I've done this so many times with... Um, Ella, I think it's just really fun to take um, a little girl. Sometimes I've, I've seen people do it with vintage men's photos and embellished their persona. And I just think it's just a really fun, lighthearted -heart way to work with these sorts of photos and, and demonstrate both personality and um, just kind of give it a fun air. This one's um, equally as fun from Mikey. I, I think this is a picture of her, one of her children. Um, so a, a vintage photo. She's actually combined elements from the previous collection, but I love how she's used the stamp down here. And again, by placing that stamp over the top of the artistry, she's allowing the colors of the artistry to come through and give the appearance that that typewriter is, is, being, um, is being colored. 
And then she's added in these butterflies. These are actually from the Art Play um, Palette um, Lost collection. So this was part of the bonus there. So I love how she's kind of gone out of, of her comfort zone and um, combined multiple Art Play palettes. This one is from uh, Laura. I really like how she's taken a photo and she's extended it across the three edges of her design. She has her frame here, uh, which sort of draws focus to the little guy in the lap here. But where it really shines for me is the use of her textures and elements towards this edge. It really helps to create an intentional blended edge or a defined edge uh, to this piece of artistry. And then you've got the title nestled in there. So I wanted to showcase that one. This one's neat because it's not a um, typical of the art play palette. Um, Jerry has gone in there and she has obviously recolored the paper to coordinate with her photos. And I think it works really, really well. And then we have this one from LMA, which is awesome. She's kind of done a partial, partly blended this image and then a partial extraction to make it look like this little guy is literally climbing out from behind this paper. So real clever placement and manipulation of the image to work with the layers in the artistry. And then this one I thought was interesting too. She, this one is by Kathy and she's actually created um, a, She's created a focal point out of one of the uh, multimedia elements. Um, so if you notice, this is the focal point. And then she's used her photo, blended her photo with the artistry in the background to sort of create the mat. So even though the there is a photo in the mix here, I feel like the elements are kind of the, the focal point. That's what draws the eye in to notice the photo. And I really love the vertical nature of this design and the way that she has aligned the title, but she's added in the secondary cluster here at the, at the bottom. And what this does is it inter intersects with the vertical nature of this multimedia to create tension um, and excitement in her artistry. So I thought that was worth pointing out too. This one we just looked at, this one is from Michelle. If you're curious about that, go check out the AA Connect if you missed that. And then this one, I wanted to show you just the different option. It's now gonna play up for some reason. Here we go, it's just a little slow. So um, I love how she has manipulated those frames um, to showcase these pictures. I, I believe it's her granddaughter. And then this one is from Darina. Let's go ahead and open this up so that we can work on it this way. But a lot of use of white space here, which is, is always fun. It really allows the eye to shift to the uh, subject. And it also gives the artistry more of a minimalist style look. Um, so, you know, if this style of artistry is a little crazy for you, sometimes you can tone it down by adding in more white space into the mix. And her use of blending modes always makes her colors in her artwork shine. I also like too that she has added her journaling in this area at the top here where the paper texture is. Um, this is in hung Hungarian, and so it's obviously some text that she's added in that's of um, importance. And you have the paper textures that's in three different places that create a nice visual triangle around your layout design. And then this one is lovely with from Joan. I think the colors are just perfect. I love how she has used the tag to um, showcase the place and the name. And then she's added in a, an additional um, area of text here. So again, you've got this nice visual triangle of text. You've got this lovely focal point of the, uh, of, of the multimedia element. She's changed the color of the clover here to bring in more of a pink tone uh, to coordinate better with her design. So just a super simple, but really effective. Um, I really like those pages that don't require a lot of effort, but yield a lot of visual effect. And then this is one that I did. Um, again, I just wanted to show you, I created a bouquet of flowers using the various elements. And again, if you miss that, you can catch it if you go ahead and watch the AA Connect session. And then I think we're almost to the end, but maybe not quite. Um, this one is from Diane. Diane did a number of double page spreads. I just included one just because we have so many today. But I really liked in this one how she used the word transfers. Notice how she's placed them in three different places. And then she's added her journaling um, to sort of mirror that same effect. So she's created this sort of frame of text 
around her quad of photos. And then there's all of this artistry underneath the textures and the colors and then the photo glows. And then she's added in the multimedia element on top of that. And she's embellished it further with the elements from the art play palette and um, the word art from the, the grow um, from the grow word art mix. So I really like how this is quite intense in terms of the number of elements. And then that's balanced again, this much larger photo, but with fewer elements, it works really, really nicely. And the use of the red to create a visual triangle so it bounces the eye um, back and forth across the two pages. And then another one that I did of Ella and Luke, just a really simple page, just goes to show how easy it can be just to um, put a page together. I used one of the backgrounds, I added in the word transfer, I used the curled frames in order to blend my image. And then I placed the multimedia element on top of that, added in the additional elements from the art play palette and added in my title. So again, super simple, quick layout. And that leads us, I believe, to the end of the team inspiration. So from here, I'm gonna move on and start creating the layers. If you're interested in getting this collection, then you can either go to my website and you can go to that blog post and you can click on the Outplay Wildflower collection. I will be um, updating this post with the replay of this session, um, at least the first portion of it. And if you go ahead and purchase the collection, you get the full thing. So that's really awesome. If you wanna go straight to the store, um, I am located at Anna Aspinus Designs. And if you click on my store, then it's going to show up with all of the different options. The Art Play Wildflower collection is the one that you want. It's only available until the end of the month. So, um, and you can save, I think it's 59%, 56% um, discount on the complete collection as well. So I'm gonna now move on into our session.